Hello everyone, my name is David. Today we are going to take a look at another real tale with you. In Mumbai, from August 18th to 23 in the year 2010, an international jewelry exhibition was held at the NSC ground. Only those who were invited or were in the jewelry or diamond business could attend this exhibition. Everyone who attended had to register and provide ID proof to gain entry, so the exhibition security could verify their credentials and legitimacy. Many foreigners also attended the exhibition, but they did not need to register because they were tourists and had passports, and they gave passport ID for registration which allowed them easy entry. The exhibition was running very well, attracting visitors from far and wide. There was always a large crowd with people coming to see new and exquisite diamonds and jewelry. Major companies from around the world with jewelry and diamond businesses showcased their products at the exhibition, hoping that people would come, appreciate, and start buying their goods. The last day of the International Jewelry Exhibition was August 23, 2010, and over the past five days, more than 30,000 people had visited the exhibition. It was the last day of the exhibition, and it was evening. Just a few hours later, the exhibition was supposed to end. Suddenly, in the evening, chaos erupted at the exhibition. A news spread around, causing people to be shocked and distressed. To know what the news was and why people were so surprised and upset, watch this video till the end. There were some diamonds kept at the exhibition. These diamonds belonged to a Hong Kong-based Israeli company. The diamonds were 887.24 carats in total, and there were 300 pieces of them, valued at $1 million. They were kept in a box, and the diamonds were small pieces. People were coming to see the diamonds, admiring them, and leaving happy because the diamonds were so beautiful. Suddenly, one of the organizers from the company noticed that one of the boxes was missing. The missing box contained 300 pieces of diamonds. Upon realizing the diamonds were missing, the organizer from the diamond company became very anxious because the diamonds were worth $1 million, which is not a small amount. He quickly reported the situation to the exhibition organizers. They immediately closed all the doors of the exhibition and told the people inside that they couldn't leave until everyone was searched. They assured the visitors that they weren't trying to disrespect them, but requested their cooperation as a valuable item was missing, and it was necessary to search for it. The company who displaying their jewelry and diamonds had their personal guards present because they couldn't trust anyone with such valuable items. All the gates of the exhibition were closed, and they started searching every person leaving the exhibition. Despite thorough searches, they couldn't find anything with anyone. Two hours had passed since the incident, and the people had been searching for two hours, but no clues were found to help them locate who had stolen it. None of the people present had the diamond, then the company's organizers had called the police. The Mumbai police were informed about the theft after two hours. When the Mumbai police learned about this, they were shocked that an international exhibition was taking place with very wealthy people from all over the world attending. If a theft occurred in such a scenario, it would tarnish the country's reputation. Therefore, the commissioner of Mumbai police immediately called a meeting and formed a team of two senior police officers. The commissioner instructed them to solve the case as quickly as possible with their teams, check the CCTV cameras at the exhibition, and investigate the profiles of the people who attended the exhibition. The commissioner mentioned that it would be easier to check their profiles because they would have had to register before entering the exhibition, providing any ID card during registration. The two teams quickly went to the exhibition and began checking the CCTV footage. On that day alone, over 6,000 people had attended, making it difficult to search each person. The police had already been informed two hours late about the theft, and if they searched each of the 6,000 people, it would take too much time, allowing the thief to escape. The police feared that if they didn't find the thief among the 6,000 attendees, and if the thief was a foreigner, they might leave the country. If the thief was local, they might flee from Mumbai. The police reviewed not only the CCTV footage from that day, but also the footage from the past five days, hoping to find evidence. After reviewing all the CCTV footage, the police discovered that the cameras did not clearly capture the area where the diamonds were kept. 
Some angles were visible, but not all. Thus, the CCTV footage was not very helpful. The box where the diamonds were kept was not in the camera's focus, making it difficult to see. The police were frustrated, believing that if the cameras had captured the area correctly, they could have easily identified the thief. One team continued to review the CCTV footage, trying to understand what happened, who tampered with what, and who entered the area. Another team checked the list of people who attended the exhibition. All the police force at the exhibition were working to find the thief. Some were reviewing CCTV footage, some were checking the registration list, and even after multiple reviews, no concrete evidence was found. Suddenly, a senior officer noticed a girl. The police believed that the Indian attendees had provided all their ID proofs, while the foreign attendees might not have provided the same level of identification, only needing their passports for entry. The Indian attendees who registered with their ID cards were checked by one team, while another team kept an eye on the foreigners to monitor their behavior. Now, the police's attention was on the girl. First, the police saw that the girl was standing with a male friend, so they thought they might be friends. After that, police her with a male friend. But then they noticed the man had changed. Then, the police saw her again with another man, which raised more suspicion. The officer said, Ignore everyone else. Keep an eye on these four people. A camera captured the girl with her three partners, all standing and talking together. The police realized that these four people knew each other, and the girl was standing at different stalls with different partners. The police found this suspicious and noted that in one room, the girl was standing with one partner while the others behaved as if they didn't know each other. The boy and girl at the stall also acted as if they were strangers. Now, the police were puzzled about their behavior, together at one place, laughing and talking, and at another place acting like strangers. The girl was at different stalls with different partners, making the police more suspicious. The senior officer told the other officers to watch these four closely. As soon as the senior officer gave this order, he called other police officers and directed them to head to Mumbai Airport. The police found their passport details in the registration list and hurried to Mumbai Airport. However, it took the police two hours to learn about the theft and another three hours to check the CCTV footage and registration list. By the time the police arrived at the airport, the four suspects had already left, heading to Germany via Dubai. Mumbai police regretted not arriving earlier, as the suspects had already left for Germany with a stopover in Dubai. Catching them would be difficult once they reached Germany. The senior Mumbai police officer, who had connections with Dubai airport security, called a senior officer there and explained the situation. He informed them about the exhibition and the suspicion around the four people who were now heading to Germany and would change flights in Dubai. A senior officer of the Mumbai police told the Dubai security officer that it was not possible to obtain the necessary permissions in such a short time. He explained that such matters between the two countries involve a lot of paperwork and they couldn't complete it quickly enough to prevent the suspects from reaching Germany. The officer requested the security team in Dubai to detain the suspects based on personal relations, assuring that the paperwork would follow later. The Dubai security team received details including flight numbers and seat numbers. As soon as the suspects arrived, the security staff was alerted and managed to identify and detain them based on their passports. They thoroughly searched the suspects, including their bags, shoes and clothes, but found no diamonds. The Dubai authorities informed the Mumbai police that they had not found any diamonds on the suspects and questioned the accuracy of the information. Despite multiple searches, nothing was found. This raised doubts among the senior officers at the Mumbai police station about whether they had targeted the right individuals. However, the Mumbai police said to Dubai officers to have the suspects undergo an X-ray, suspecting that they might have swallowed the diamonds. Upon X-raying the suspects, small objects were found in their stomachs, causing them to vomit and expel all the diamonds. This confirmed their involvement in the theft. The Dubai security officers now had to send the suspects back to India, as the crime was committed there. Three suspects were from Germany and one from Mexico country. The Dubai security officers detained the suspects while the Mumbai police prepared the legal paperwork. 
Once the documents were ready, the crime branch officers flew to Dubai, collected the suspects, and brought them back to India for trial. In court, it was proven that the suspects had committed the theft as the diamonds were recovered from them. They were charged and sentenced to two years in prison. After serving their sentences, which ended in March 2012, the suspects were deported to their respective countries, three to Germany and one to Mexico. Thanks to the quick thinking of a few officers, the case of a major diamond theft was solved within a few hours. Their suspicion arose when they noticed a woman frequently changing partners and behaving unusually friendly with them in public. This led to their investigation and ultimately proved their suspicions correct. So, this was today's story. Thank you for joining us on this journey today. We hope you enjoyed the content and found it valuable.